You guys ask for it, and I'm here to deliver. A little history on the Pendleton Woolen Mills. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if you are a Pacific Northwest man and you don't own a Pendleton board shirt, then you need to pack your stuff up and you need to go right on down to California. <laughs> Pendleton is uh, in the bone with Pacific Northwest people. My granddad was a Pendleton man. My dad was a Pendleton man. I am. I got my first one when I was 18. And as I said yesterday, they make the finest shirts anywhere in the world from Virgin Oregon Wool. We'll talk a little bit about the history here. Uh, I'll show you what makes a board shirt a board shirt, which is what I'm proudly wearing right now. Had this one for well, going on 20 years now. An incredible story and incredible company. Do you know that the Pendleton Woolen Mills have been making wool, not wool products for well, over 150 years. That's a long time. You know, when I think of Pendleton, or Mrs. W and I used to, um, um, back when we were first married, we didn't have a lot of money. And, and we would uh, have these mystery dates. And, and these mystery dates would be, oftentimes we would go to uh, uh, the, the thrift stores. We would go to thrift stores. And what, my, what I was always looking for is I'd go through the racks and I was looking for that blue label that Pendleton label right there. The sad thing about it is a lot of the vintage garments, well, they're very hard to find because every Portlander uh, is always looking for them and finding them, finding them. But I would look through the large and the extra large section, right? And I would find, you know, it was like finding a golden nugget, you know, that blue and gold label. You pull it out and put it on just to be disappointed that someone had thrown it in the washer and the dryer and shrunk it and the sleeves were up to your elbows, right? <laughs> so that was the old ones. Now you can wash them. Um, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But be careful with those old ones. If you buy them vintage on eBay and such, they may say large, but they've probably uh, been shrunken up. So the Pendleton Woolen Company or Woolen Mills, uh, of course, in Pendleton, Pendleton Oregon, and then uh, not too far from here in Washougal, uh, make beautiful, beautiful wool. They originally started back in the day uh, making blankets, and you'll see if you look on their catalogs, and you see a lot of the patterns that that they'll have a real strong Native American theme. They were really popular with Native Americans. Uh, the Nez Pierce, I believe, in particular, uh, really coveted them, and they would trade, and, and they really inspired a, a lot of those patterns. You know, that real pioneer spirit uh, is definitely uh, in the garment. In the 30s or so, they started um, the, the making their first clothing or clothing garments. It was for men, uh, men's shirts. And back in that, those days in the 30s, you know, things were really drab, and you didn't have these colorful, beautiful patterns like you have now. Uh, grays and dark greens and, and such. And then they started um, kind of marketing to, to sportsmen and that's when they started incorporating those beautiful colors that they're so famous for today. Uh, so much history. I remember my grandmother was a seamstress and she would sew and she loved Pendleton wools. And when I was a little kid, we would go to the to the Pendleton Woolen Mill. The, it was kind of an outlet of the day and they had remnants and she would sift through the, this, this beautiful bolts. You know, they had these big bolts of wool hanging on there and, and you could buy things and she would make and sew these things. And it, it was really quite a thing. Another inter interesting thing is that when we were going through my granddad's things after he'd passed away, after, you know, he wore Pendleton shirts as well. He still had all of his original shirts. You know, from, these are from the, the 50s. You know, and so that he was still wearing and they still just looked like brand new, really incredible. So I, I really took issue with a lot of, uh, there were a lot of ignorance. There was a lot of ignorance uh, in the comment section when folks were asking me about the shirt and, and they liked it. And if I could provide a link, when I provided a link, some folks went over there and saw that these shirts are, shirts are expensive, $125, $130 or so, and came back and like, oh, are you stupid? You know, why would I pay, 100, or why would I pay over $100 for a stupid flannel shirt? Well, you don't know anything. You know, these are important to us o Oregon and Washington folk, you know, especially Oregon. Like, you, I don't know. I mean, we all have our things, right? Like, I think of um, New Orleans, you know, you think of jumbo and food. And when you think of East Coast man, you know, they like to have, drive their... I rock Camaros and, and Kansas City barbecue. Well, this is quintessential Pacific Northwest. So let's get into the shirt. Let me show you what makes a board shirt a board shirt, and, uh, and I'll show you where you can get your own. So what's it like to wear a Pendleton shirt? Well, the best way I could describe it, it's like 
putting a blanket on. <laughs> you know, a nice, if you haven't worn wool before, wool is one of the, it's an amazing, you know, of course, these all come from sheep, you know, local sheep. And, and the thing about wool is it, uh, it, it's like when you put something on, it feels like it's giving you a hug. You know, it's just that, it's just that warm coziness that you don't get from synthetics. Um, some, just the feel of it is uh, appealing. When I used to do timber framing, I always had some project going on in the shop. You know, guys would come over, and the first thing they'd want to do is to touch it, right? Just the touch of it, uh, it brings back so much, so many memories to me. The other thing that's kind of cool is that those it, guys who are into Pendleton and wear Pendleton, you recognize it right away. And those of you who ride motorcycles or have a, like a unique type of car will understand this. As you know, when you're going down the road, there's always, you know, you always give each other a thumbs up or a nod or a wave. You're almost like you're kind of an inside group. It's very common that when I wear a Pendleton shirt, a, a guy to come up to me and he's wearing one too and strike up a conversation. You know, it's just really interesting that way. Fun fact here is the blue label here you can see. Uh, it says here, warranted to be a Pendleton. Now the original founders, they, they argued over this. They, one of them wanted to say, guaranteed to be a Pendleton, and, and the guy that ultimately won out said, you know what, I, we can't guarantee anything in this world. There's no guarantees. But what I will put on the label, my shirt is warranted, meaning I will take care of it if you have any problem. And I, I thought that was kind of a, a fun fact right there. So uh, one more fun fact here. This is the exact shirt that the Beach Boys wore in their first album cover. And as I said yesterday, the original name of that band was uh, the Pendletons. I don't know if it was Pendletons or Pendletones, but they were big fans of the shirts. These shirts were really popular in 1960 in California in the surfing scene. And uh, no self-respecting surfer would be caught without his uh, Pendleton board shirt. The board shirt is also the most popular of all their shirts. Now be careful when ordering. This is the classic. It's a boxy cut. It's a large cut. That's what you want. They make a slim cut one now that's kind of uh, set up for hipsters. Uh, stay away from that one. You want the classic, the traditional one. And these do run big when you're sizing. I wear a tall long. I'm 6'4", 220, um, and it's pretty big on me. I, this to me, the thing, it's not really a shirt and it's not really a coat. It I had a hard time getting used to it because I'm like, do you tuck it in? You know, when I first got one, what do you do with it? But it's really not thick enough to be a coat. What it is, is it's just, it's manifested from, it, it's a result. It's the outcome of, of a shirt that's needed for this particular climate. I know you guys in the Midwest and, you know, you have, it gets super cold over there in Minnesota, Nebraska, I get all that. But there's a special dampness, coldness in the Pacific Northwest that this, shirt was born from that just it just it it cuts through that you know that that cold moist just above freezing weather that we have because we're so close to the coast uh, this is the perfect garment it's just so interesting you know in this you see the same thing in in the united kingdom or or britain you know you see a lot of wools and tweeds you know it's a cold damp uh, environment and the clothing uh, are a direct result from that. Just, it's kind of interesting how those the, those things happen. But this is best worn uh, in, in a cold mornings in the fall and the winter over top uh, maybe a denim shirt or, or a work shirt. Uh, something that uh, when you get warmed up and working a little bit, oftentimes you'll shed um, when it starts warming up and the sun comes out. Um, but uh, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shirt. So a big boxy cut. So let's start at the top uh, and go over all the features. Of course, 100% virgin wool. One of my favorite things is, uh, you can always tell a board shirt, is that the top button, they have normal buttonholes here, has a, a corded loop right there. Uh, that you, you never really use that. I, I don't know that I've ever done that, but it, it's just kind of a nice touch. Uh, you can always pick that out when you see it. You'll just see that little cord right there on the corner, and uh, that's made uh, that you could loop this over here if you wanted to. Pretty relaxed collar. As I said, big boxy fit. Another thing that's really uh, unique to the board shirt is they'll take the fabric and they turn it at a 45 degree angle for the pockets. And big, generous pockets that don't have buttons. I used to think that I, I didn't like this when I first started wearing them, you know, just having these soft uh, pockets here, but I actually prefer it. And I like the fact that they're cut so generous um, for phones or, or whatever you want to put in it. My granddad said, he used to say, uh, what was it, handier than a shirt pocket. And that's so true. I, when I put a shirt on in the summer, it's a t-shirt that doesn't have a pocket. I miss it so much uh, just to be able to put your phone in or just to store things. A guy wants to have shirt pockets for sure. 
on his shirt. And I like that it doesn't have a button because you can access it and get things in. I usually drop my iPhone in there uh, without having to fiddle with it. Um, I, I, I do prefer that. Wool is uh, very nice in, in wet climates too because even though it's wet, it can be pretty wet and soak up a lot of water. It still maintains almost uh, most of its um, insulating properties where you take down, for example, uh, once down gets wet, then it's done. Uh, you just there's, there's nothing left. You're going to have uh, just normal, non-pleated in the sleeves, so just very simple, a very a good-looking shirt. You have a double button on the, on the uh, cuffs right there, so you can tighten those up if it gets really cold or if you have maybe smaller wrists. If you wear uh, larger watches and such, I find that the, bigger, the, the outside button is a, be is a better fit right there. Uh, so that basically makes up that. And also at the bottom, uh, one thing that's unique about this and kind of, you know, the board shirt is a bit of a misnomer. I, I think it's more of a cross between a shirt and a coat. You would never, ever tuck in a board shirt. Uh, they don't have shirt tails. They have a flat hemmed surface there uh, that just, and it's long in the body. So that's really warm. You don't think about that, but just having an extra three or four inches down below the, the waistline when you're working, if you're bending over, you know, your shirt rides up and stuff, it, you never have exposed skin. It always, just that extra maybe three or four inches from maybe a normal shirt is very nice, and it's made to be worn on the out outside. You, you would not tuck this one in, and that extra coverage is always nice. They give you two extra buttons, so if and when the buttons fail, uh, you don't have to worry about matching them up. They sew them in down there, and you can uh, do that yourself or take it into a seamstress and have two extra buttons. And then, uh, yeah, very, very cool. I, I, I just so much, so, so much history and so many memories of these shirts um, growing up and my, my granddad's fondness of them. Uh, it's very, very cool. They do a lot of special runs. You can see, I don't know if they have it on this one, Pendleton, 90 shirt years. Holy Mills, not this one, but the one I'm wearing, if you can see this right here, they'll bring back their vintage pattern sometimes. So this one here is a really beautiful, I don't know if you call it a tartan exactly, but uh, they sewed a tag in here, this pattern inspired by Pendleton Archives from 1957. So this was a pattern uh, of one of my granddad's shirts, 1957 pattern that you could still get, oh, that was 20 years ago. Uh, but uh, that's, that's kind of neat. They do a double fold of wool right here on the front, uh, which is unsewn. It just gives you a little extra layer of uh, protection for wind, uh, just a double thickness right there on the front. So when that's overlapped, you actually has, have four layers of wool right here, which really help if you're in, in the wind and it, it kind of prevents it from coming in there and, and cutting, cutting into you and where you're getting cold. Some folks complain about um, wool being itchy. And it can be, uh, that's for sure. But one thing I have learned is you get used to it. Um, but I don't wear uh, the wool typically on my skin. Uh, it's usually in the wintertime and I have another shirt underneath of it. But one thing they've done on the board shirts, which are kind of cool, is that there's a really soft material here, which is a cotton, I believe, um, that if you were just to wear this uh, as a normal shirt or directly onto your skin, you would uh, have this uh, really uh, soft cotton on there where it tends to be a little bit itchy uh, over the shoulders. Um, so that's, that's another thing you see on the, on the board shirts as well. But that basically makes it up. Um, a very nice weight. There's actually a lot of material in these when you look at them. Uh, they're because of that boxy cut and how large they are. Very cool. And they're made exactly the same way, the exact same patterns that they were uh, in the 50s, just like the one granddad's had. I would be wearing my granddad's Pendleton shirts uh, today if it weren't for the fact that they're smalls, <laughs> and I, I can't wear a small. Mrs. W actually wears some of his uh, old Pendleton things and coats that uh, we were able to save, and they're just in, in mint condition. You know, I, it's you know, I I know people don't get it. You know, and might be thinking this is a little bit crazy, or go I go overboard with this stuff a little bit, but you know, I disagree. I, as I said a couple weeks ago, you know, we've, we're losing. We have no tethers to our culture, very few anymore. There's nothing that we can really hang on to that, that are, identify us for who we are and where we come from. You know, and everything's so plastic and sanitary and there's very few things that are unique and there's very few traditions in life. So this is one of those things that I'm very proud of. I'm proud of the company um, that just 
I enjoy every time I put in. It's it's a little it's a special or put on. It's a special occasion every time I wear it. Um, it's fun to go out in public and see others, folks that are wearing it, that get it and understand it. And uh, it's just cool. It's just part of who we are, where we came from. There's a lot of wonderful history, and, and I like it. I think those things are important. I think it's important to be moored to your culture and where you came from and to have these things that are reminders that are unique to your particular home uh, or state. Um, is, it's hard to put a price on that. Um, so. I don't care if they're $140. If they were $200, I would still buy one. Um, but try it out. Uh, I think I, I doubt you'll return it. You can always return it if you don't like it. But it will probably become one of your most favorite articles uh, of clothing in the winter that you'll uh, really enjoy loving or enjoy wearing and something that you can pass down. So the idea that it's not a good value at $140 uh, when you consider the heritage and the quality and the fact that it's made from wool that's uh, a renewable resource um, and, and you know it's anyone who says that they, they don't know anything about anything um, it's not a flannel shirt from Walmart and when you count the cost how long do those flannel shirts from Walmart last how many are you gonna buy over the course of your life versus we still have my granddad's Pendleton's from a hundred years ago <laughs> you know well, the thing speaks for itself so Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put an affiliate link uh, from at to Amazon. They do sell them there. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, we make a few bucks from that. So I put those on there for, for us and for your convenience. But uh, you won't be disappointed. Pick out the pattern that you like. There's lots to choose from. They change uh, all the time, every year, and uh, they're, they're cool. This is the one you want. All right, thanks for watching. May God bless you guys. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you on the next video. <music>